Urshka and Inbab. Okay, so Lightrix provides content creators with tools to easily and quickly edit and create content in, in their phones. For example, they can add music, apply filters, and uh, uh, transitions like you can see in the video, and many more stuff. Um, so Lightrix wants a tool that will allow them to know what is happening in the videos that users are editing. Why is this useful? So this is a very low level tool that can be used to build on top of it other features, more complex features. For example, if you know what's happening in the video, you can better recommend uh, which features are suitable for this video. And also another example can be, you can detect when each action appears to do, uh, to suggest tran transitions and stuff like that. Okay, so specifically our main goal is to classify videos of arbitrary length. Uh, so for example, here we have someone shooting an arrow. So we would like to return, given this video, return archery, someone shooting an arrow. The, the stretch goal would be uh, to detect actions that change over time, subsequent actions. So for example, someone uh, cutting an apple and then eating an apple. And the stretch goal of the stretch goal would be to recognize several actions occurring in the frame at the same time. So the limitations, since we're running on mobile, would be that uh, the model has to be lightweight. We don't want the app to be huge. And also it needs to be fast because we want a good user experience. Okay. Um, we would have loved to work on the data from Lightrix and data from real world uh, that people uh, take on their phones and edit on, Light on Lightrix apps, but the data is very diverse, is unannotated, uh, it's very difficult to collect, and there is a lot of legal issues with working with it. So, we decided to test our pipeline on a very popular computer vision uh, action classification data set called Kinetic 600. Uh, it's a data set that contains half a million videos of 10 seconds uh, with one person doing one thing. Okay, let's take a step back and uh, talk about what is a video. A video is uh, images uh, in time sorted in time. So, uh, and we need the both of them to correctly understand what's happening in the video. For example, on the left, it's quite easy to just know just from the spatial information what's happening. Someone is skiing. But um, in this case, to be able to discern between sitting down and standing up, you have to have the temporal uh, aspect. So, one operation that can take into account space and time is a 3D convolution. So we chose two models that uh, ran really fast, and here we can see some, what's happening. We take uh, frames and apply uh, the 3D convolution to create uh, feature maps that combine information from multiple frames. So if they combine space and time. Uh, what's interesting about this architecture is that they start with a very small architecture. Small meaning this axis, for example, the resolution of the image, the depth, and many other, uh, other axes. And every time they take a step and see how the, the performance or the accuracy of this network improves, and they take the step that gives them the most improvement with the least amount of added computations. So this uh, results in a very small and fast network. Uh, the next one is MovieNet. It builds upon what we see in X3D, but adds um, something called a buffer. So every time we create uh, these feature maps, instead of throwing them away every, every time, we can actually store them and use them to pad the subsequent 
um, inference round. For example, we can split this video and run a little bit of the frames, and then the next frames, uh, the next inference round will know what, what the model saw last time. So let's talk about what this uh, buffer allows us to do. So uh, here we can see the accuracy in, in Kinetic 600 and the memory usage. We can see that we don't have to put all the video inside the model. We can actually put a, one frame every time and still have a very good accuracy without increasing the memory usage. And here we can see the accuracy as a function of operations. And we can see also that our model, is, which is the um, yellow one, is very good at very little operations for video. Okay, that's it. So I'll show you a little bit about, I'll show you a demo. Okay. So a reminder, our first uh, goal was to classify a video. So we have a guy here singing. It's a video we took from TikTok. And this is the probabilities over time. We see at the beginning he was playing with his uh, hands, so it says shaking hands, but then it decides he's singing or recording music. Another example, like this. Everything is running here on real time. Uh, we can see that this video, a woman dancing, and it's correctly classified as dancing. Uh, okay, so now let's go to our stretch goal um, of subsequent actions. So we don't have a, a data set that has subsequent actions, so we just merged videos from Kinetic 600 or something like that. And let's see what happens if it can correctly classify it without changing. So we, we have someone dancing and then someone singing and it doesn't work because this model is made to work on single action and it was trained like this, so it won't work. But what we did was we decided to reset the buffer we talked about earlier and to see if it can still correctly classify with less information, with less buffer, but uh, then it will gain the, the ability to classify subsequent actions. So let's see what happens if we reset the buffer every three seconds. In this case, we'll see that it detects the woman dancing at the beginning and then it changes to detect it as someone recording music. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? So we managed to complete our main task and to classify correctly a single action. Uh, we also managed to tackle the problem of uh, subsequent actions. And um, now we want to address the problem of multi-persons and multi-action uh, simultaneously. So once we have a video, we want to be able to, uh, a video with uh, several individuals, we want to be able to classify all the action in the video. For that, we needed to find um, a good candidate, a good model that is able to detect the individuals in the, in the, um, in the video and also uh, to each individual to classify the action he does. We wanted to find uh, one model that do everything together end to end. Uh, but when we looked in the literature, we found only three papers and two of them uh, wasn't with uh, code and the last one was really heavy and it wasn't suitable for our needs. Um, so we needed to design a pipeline that uses two separate models. Uh, one model is for the detection of the people in the video, and the other model is for the classification of the actions. Now, the advantage of using this sort of pipeline is it's modular and we can optimize each uh, part, each, uh, each model 
separately. But when we uh, take another model in, we increase the complexity and um, we, uh, uh, the runtime is longer, which is not very good for us. But So once we have a video, we uh, insert it into the detector, you see here, and it outputs a bounding box around the, the individual in the, in the video. Then it is cropped into a mini uh, a video of that individual, and that goes into the classifier that classified this woman as dancing. Uh, and that is uh, being done for every individual in the, in the video. So we have a good candidate for the action classification. We have a good model that already uh, made good class uh, classification for the actions. Now we, all we need is a good detector. So we use a YOLO combined with deep sort. YOLO is, very, is a well-known uh, um, model for detection. It works with high accuracy and in real time. And um, the deep sort is the object tracking uh, that we, has, we have to use that in order because a video is a set of uh, images. So we want to track this uh, person over time to build it into uh, the, the video for the action. Um, and we evaluated on a data set uh, for, uh, that is used for the detections. Uh, and even for the lightest model of the YOLO, uh, we got really good results uh, only for detection. But as I mentioned before, using another model increase our, our time and, uh, um, and complexity. And for a 60 minutes video, just the detections takes uh, around 200 seconds. But we can uh, find ways to make it more efficient, to optimize it. It's only one way to optimize the, the, all the pipeline. And since a video is a set of images over time, we don't really need to use all the images in a second. We can sample from a second, we can sample like every uh, uh, frame, four frames in a second. And in here we can make it uh, the detection part much uh, faster. So now we have some example for the whole pipeline, uh, how it works. So now we can see um, uh, an individual riding a horse. And um, if you can see it, it's classified correctly here uh, as 73% riding a horse. We have the bounded box around uh, the, uh, the rider. For uh, two uh, persons that uh, doing uh, ice fishing, we have, again, uh, it's classified correctly ice fishing. Uh, for the one in the back, it's also classified correctly as ice fishing. But since it's all the way in the back, it's uh, a bit more complicated. So it, it's, uh, le uh, it's, it's the top one, but it's uh, about 20%. Not like here that it's 70%. And for the most complicated part, we have a whole band. So a lot of uh, people in the video. And um, it, we managed to classify uh, correctly for this individual and the one that is, uh, is playing the guitar, but not for the three uh, that uh, is on the back because they're very close together. And um, for the action model, we need uh, the background uh, it's capture a little bit of this person, so it's um, it's a lot more complicated in this uh, uh, in this case, but we can do things that uh, will improve it. So what we managed to achieve, we managed to achieve our main goal and our uh, advanced goals. Uh, we managed to uh, find the good uh, candidates and pipeline for uh, this task. 
and we have uh, some ideas how to improve it in the future, uh, like uh, building a, a specific data set for the um, end users, uh, like uh, playing with, uh, with all the hyper parameters, like the bounding box and, uh, and the time that we are sampling, and to fine tune the model. We want to uh, thank uh, our uh, two mentors, uh, Urshka and Inbar, thank you very much uh, for all your guidance uh, and all the time that you invested. And um, we also want to thank uh, Lightrix and Ydata for the opportunity to learn. Thank you. Uh, questions? Are all these models specific to humans or so other humans? So, uh, no, but we chose to target humans because usually um, we are uh, targeting uh, TikTok users and Instagram users and usually they uh, film themselves, but we can uh, uh, make it, uh, the models is not only for you humans, yeah. Also, if you guys want, you can go to the barcode and play with the model. Uh, be kind, because it's not too long.